In this video, we're going to be finishing off lesson 3-2, which started off with the product and quotient rule. This lesson is just going to focus on calculator differentiation and how to tell when we should use calculator differentiation, at least in this course. Now, for most of us using a TI-83 or TI-84, this is going to be the method we use. If you have a TI-Inspire or a Casio, uh, you need to either consult your, TI, your calculator manual or come see me in person. Now, for these calculators, we can find the derivative at a specific point. This is one of three key things you need to know with your calculator at this point. The first two were covered in unit one, where we use the calculator to solve an equation and we use the calculator to graph a function in a specific window. This is the third technique. There will be a fourth technique covered later in the course. We will either use dy dx in the calculator menu or n deriv in the math menu, numerical derivative. It will also graph the derivative of a given function using n deriv in the math menu, in the, uh, using in the main menu. Since this works, numerical derivative from both most situations, and in some situations will be more accurate, it's the recommended method. Now, this note is written for most people using a TI-83. The math print mode will change the appearance slightly. It still does the same thing. Don't get confused. So in our situation, we're always gonna be using, we're gonna hit the math menu button and then the eight key. So when we pull up our calculator, we hit math, we're taking this menu, we're usually just gonna hit eight. Now, you can scroll all the way down here, but that wastes a lot of time, especially when my computer is lagging this much. So just faster to hit eight. So I'll clear it off, math eight. And you have this function. Now. That displays a little tiny, I'm sorry. And that's what we mean by change appearance slightly. So for this first example, this is only needed for an 83. Only looks like this for 83. So if you have a TI-83, you have to memorize the order you're putting it in, which in case is the function, then the variable, then the number, f prime of two. If you have an 84 and your calculator asks you that, instead of how mine looks, you should get the updated operating system. This does not take that long. Please make sure you get that updated operating system from me. So, instead of doing all of this, it just is the natural one we would want. I don't know why it's so small. So, which variable are we taking the derivative of? X, I hit the X key. What function do we want? X cubed. Now, whenever you do the exponent, make sure you escape from the exponent by hitting right, or whatever other buttons put in, plus three to the x. So we make sure this function matches that function. And where do I want to evaluate this? At two. Okay, that's how all these pieces lined up in here. And we get this answer, 21.888. So. And if you're a truncator, this would also be acceptable. Again, I highly recommend you just pick one and stick with it. Do not switch. Just decide whether you're going to be a rounder or a truncator. And then you do you. So, um, there's no other way to get this derivative. I see students every year who do not understand that this is a calculator question and then start doing this. I predict every year that students will do this and I tell them how wrong that is. 
how this does not give you that answer at all. This would say f prime of two, here, let's just guess that this is the rule. f prime of two equals 12 plus six. Do these two match? No, and that's because that's all nonsense. At this point in my course, you do not know how to take the derivative of three kinds of functions that come up a lot. So when you see trig, which I mean sine, cosine, tangent, secant, when you see logs, natural log, log base 10, very rare, but it's mostly natural log. Or when you see exponential, e to the x, 3 to the x, 2 to the x. When you see these functions, use your calculator. At least for the foreseeable future. And by foreseeable future, I'm talking about up until unit seven or unit nine. If you see those functions on a test, that you need to know it means use your calculator. If you see those functions in homework, you need to know it means use your calculator. End of the story. Please be careful. Let's do another example. Lots of stuff going on here. Let's have some fun. So find g prime of two, g prime of four, and sketch the graph. All right, let's do it. Um, whenever I'm being asked to use the same function multiple times, and to avoid some confusing parentheses, we're gonna let y1 equal natural log of all that jump. Whenever you're asked to do this on the AP test or on my test, it's going to be much faster and much error prone, much less error prone, sorry, to go to your Y1 menu and type it out here calmly, natural log X squared, oops, try again, natural log X squared, this is much safer for square because we're already out of the exponent. You saw me just mess up big time. Okay, natural log, blah, blah, blah. So we have y1 here. And here's another reason you really want to use a newer operating system. When we have to take the derivative, we're gonna type in y1. So we're gonna do math eight. See how quick that was? X. And now I'm gonna type in y1. I'm not gonna type in natural log. I hit alpha, hit alpha, trace, and it brings me up my y variable menu. Which one do I want? I want y1. Where do I want to evaluate this? At the point two. Hit enter, 4.000. Whether you're a rounder or a truncator, the only acceptable answer here is 4.000. So four would be acceptable. I'm gonna write down the three decimal places just to emphasize that you're always supposed to write three decimals. This works for anything. Alpha trace, you can treat it like a function. Y1 of eight, that's me plugging eight into this function. Okay, you can use this. It's a very helpful technique. Without the newer operating system, you have to hit variables. Which one? Y variables. Which Y variables? The function Y variables. And then you get to this menu. I'll just change it up. Okay. Math, eight, G prime of four. X. Alpha trace y1 at 4. 
0.615. Whether you round or truncate, that is the only acceptable answer, 615. To save even more time, up, up, you're highlighting that, enter. It copies it down here, and if we wanted to just evaluate it again, let's do the derivative at x equals eight. And you're done, just like that, without typing anything. You can save a lot of time by learning your calculator backwards and forwards. Please take the time to do that. Now we want to graph g prime. To get graph g prime, we're going to go over here. We're going to shut off y1. I'm highlighting the equal sign right now. I hit enter. And now you should notice that your equal sign is not highlighted. It's no longer surrounded by a black background. Your menu should look like my menu with or without the color. And now we're going to let y2 equal the derivative of y1 with the variable x at the point x. Now this is the most confusing part. Without the old menu, and look at this. Math 8, which variable? x, which function? Alpha trace y1, where? Which x value do you want to use? x equals x. You're going to let the calculator choose that as you go from left to right. So now I'm going to hit the graph. And this takes forever because my calculator is clearly based on this computer's running speed. And this computer is having terrible difficulty. If you have an older calculator model, the natural log derivative will appear to cut off here and here. And you have to learn not to trust your calculator and know that this function will continue. It doesn't just stop abruptly. That's very hard. But here's what we do. Here's how we got it. So, to sketch it. Put some axes. And it pretty much looked like this. I don't know if you agree, but I think that's basically what it like. And I give you full credit. You should list your window. For us, we were using the standard window, 10 to negative 10. In both coordinates. If you weren't using the standard window, you would just record your window settings over here. You can also play around with the other zooms, zoom decimal. I shouldn't have done that because now we have to wait a while. Oh, if you ever want to stop your calculator during your result process, you can just hit off. See, it just stopped it. Right there. But notice the lag between when I hit that button, it's messed up. You, on your homework, will have some issues where it asks you to graph the second derivative. Now, how do I get the second derivative using these techniques? Well, if this is the first derivative, and the second derivative is the derivative of the first derivative. Do you see where I'm going with this? Math 8 with respect to x, alpha trace y2 derivative of the derivative where at x now every time we do this it's going to increase how much computation the calculator requires notice it inching along that's because now the calculator has to do some sort of calculation in order to figure out the first derivative and then it calculates it again to find the second derivative. So whenever you get bored of waiting for this calculator, you can just hit the R to stop it. Okay. But just to show off some techniques, this is the derivative of the, 
original function, g, evaluated at eight. This does the same exact thing now. We've created a function for the second derivative. The calculator just doesn't know which is which. Okay, it's the same process to the calculator. This will almost always be faster. We're usually not gonna ask you to graph the derivative using the calculator. It just sometimes is helpful. End of the story. One last lesson of the calculator is how it will betray you. So, f of x equals the absolute value of x. Find f prime of zero. You become really good with the calculator. You feel confident. You feel like you made a friend. Math eight at x. How do I get to absolute value? Math right to the num absolute value. X. Where? At zero. And your calculator says it's zero. So the calculator says But okay, let's actually try to drop this. But this function has a sharp turn. And if you remember your lesson 2-5, a sharp turn at x equals zero means no derivative. f prime of zero does not exist. So the calculator is just wrong. It lies. Okay. Careful. You as a human have to bring this. The calculator will not save you in every situation. You have to bring your knowledge to the table. Just to show you what we're talking about. Here's how the calculator will do this. Here's how the calculator is mistaken, I suppose. So the calculator can let this, ah, calculates the derivative by finding a secant line really close to zero. And by really close to zero, I mean it takes a little bit to the left of zero, a little bit to the right of zero, connects those two points, and finds the slope of the line. So when it does that, it will connect, I'll draw it on my picture, it connects this point over here with this point over here, connects them and says, huh, I got a slope of zero, I bet the derivative of zero. So it's using a really inaccurate secant line that fools the calculator because of the symmetry of this graph. So please be careful with the calculator. Try out some examples. Calculate some derivatives. Find out some derivatives of our band functions, so to speak. And be mindful, if you see a trig log or exponential, it's the problem's way of telling you Use your calculator. Good luck. Have fun. Peace out.